Well, good morning, everyone. How you doing? Good morning. Got some people filtering in here slowly. It's good to have you all this morning. Well, I want to start us off this morning. My name is Eric Thien. I'm the lead pastor here. I'm helping out with some music today. And we've got a guest speaker. I want to start off this morning by reading out to you from Isaiah 6. Would you go ahead and listen to this? It says in Isaiah 6, 1, In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With the two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called and the other said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And he said, this is Isaiah saying this, Woe is me, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. And I wanted to read that today because I have a friend who talks about fear and how the idea of fear is what captures our attention often. What we're afraid of, we pay most attention to. So if there was a snake in the room, we'd all be fully geared to give all of our attention on that snake in the room because it's something to be feared in that moment. And so what I want us to do is as we come before the throne of God today, we understand that God is to be revered, he is holy, and we're going to sing out that there is nothing to fear more than him, that fear doesn't stand a chance when we stand in his love today. Amen? And in that same way, God lifts us, he assigns us, he makes Isaiah clean and allows him to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And so I want to pray for us, and then we will uh, sing and lift up our voices today. Would you stand up with me if you're able? So, Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. We ask, God, that you would give us hearts to worship you, to be attentive to you in this moment, and to have all of our attention on you. And, God, we ask that you would show up in a real way. We ask that we would engage with you, that we would sit in your presence and know that you are with us here today. And we ask for this in the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said... There's 
resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. And the Lord God said, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the same the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I
hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me i raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Heaven come to fight for me. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i'll raise a hallelujah i'll raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah, I'll raise a hallelujah. Father, you love us. We raise our hallelujah to you in the midst of every day, every circumstance, the simple moments, the really tough moments. Father, we recognize that at the end of it all, you are the only one in the room with us. We bow, we sing, we praise. And Father, I ask blessing over Sister Hazel as she comes to deliver your word today. 
May your spirit be alive and well. Give her courage to not quench anything that you're wanting to say through her, and may we have ears to hear. In your name we pray. Amen. Got to thank you from the video. Happy Father's Day. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we just want to say uh, we're so glad, fathers, um, and, and those of you of whom, uh, you know, as you, as you walk with God, as you um, go in that direction, that you um, would do so knowing that the Holy Spirit is with you. And so we just want to extend a special grace. Um, but I also want to say, too, um, for those of you who maybe don't have a great relationship with your father, um, that there is um, hope and rejoicing found um, in the Father uh, who is our Father in heaven. And uh, just for me, as someone who did, my, lost my dad at 19, um, this is one of those things for me that hit it's uh, kind of different, not in, a, not in a bad way, but in a way that caused me to immediately say and identify Jesus, or sorry, God as Father in my life. And so we just want to say Happy Father's Day to those of you. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are fathers in the faith. For many around you, if you're not even physically a father, um, you may be discipling people and pouring into them. And so it's a good day. Uh, so glad to have you all here. Thank you for joining us. My name is Eric Thien, like I mentioned earlier. I'm the lead pastor here at Common Ground Northeast. Um, and I wanted to... Uh, uh, ask you just uh, we if, if you would like to get connected with us we would like to get connected with you and there we go I should probably speak into the microphone um, if you're new here, we have connect cards that we would love for you to fill out, and you can drop them in the tithe box or in the box as you walk out to the left. There's a connection place, um, a desktop there where you can leave those. Um, and so I want you to, uh, uh, to, to extend that, um, that offer to us if you would like to connect with us. If you've been around Common Ground for a long time and you call this place your, your home, if this is your family, and you have any needs that arise, please let us know too. You can do the same. You can fill out one of those cards. You can also email us at office at cgnortheast.com. And then for those of us who are joining online right now, you will actually have a link that is populated to uh, the chat section there. And if you would like to get connected with us, you can just click that link as well. Now, it takes me to this next little reminder. I do want to remind us we're still hosting online and in service. So there's two um, kind of hostings that are taking place right now. So every once in a while, we might address the audience online. Just know that that's kind of part of our um, post-COVID world and, and, and where we're at right now. The other things I want to do, I did want to give you a couple of COVID updates um, here just about mass and distancing and all of these things. Um, one is that just per the new, and I'll read it again like I did last time, per the new Marion County guidelines, we have been able to add more chairs, which is awesome. Still a recommendation that, dis, that we distance with those who are not living our households with us. And so if you just be mindful of that, we have made sure that there is distance six feet from front to back between the seat that's in front of you, but also you can kind of just gauge your distance between different people who are aside from you. And we trust that you're also just making those decisions mindfully with those who you're probably already hanging out with right now as well. Um, so front and back, uh, and then also masks. Masks are no longer necessary for fully vaccinated people in the building. Amen. We ask those not vaccinated three years and up to continue wearing masks for your safety and the safety of others. Um, and then I know that there are also people who have been um, vaccinated that still feel more comfortable with the mask on. And so feel free um, if that's your preference to wear your mask here inside of the building. Children's update. All right. Here's our children's update. During the summer, we know that there's always a lot of volunteer um, difficulties because people are going in and out of town during this time. Um, but we do want to encourage you. Our hope is to be fully functioning here in August, I believe is our, is our goal uh, date here. And so um, if you are willing, if you're able, if you're capable, and you'd like to serve us in that way, we need volunteers. Right now, it's going to be a little bit intermittent, so you may have kids in the service with us. We just want to say you're welcome here to the children. We love that you're in here, and, and we know that there is going to be um, you know, a little bit of noise because of that, and we're just okay with that here for this season. Um, but we would like to fully be functioning in August, and we can't do that without you. So please consider praying about that, asking Jesus if he might have you commit to helping us out um, here at the end of the summer, fall season, in that transition. All right, I haven't even gotten to announcements yet. I feel like I need to take a deep breath, all right? Uh, these are the announcements. VBS, June 28th, July 2nd, 9.30 to noon, 
The registration closes tomorrow, all right? Closes on the 21st. So if you would like to register your child for VBS, tomorrow is the last day. It will close at some point tomorrow. Jody, at what point does it close tomorrow? 11.59 p.m. All right, so you have the whole day. All right, it'll close tomorrow. Um, this is a really cool thing that we're introducing. We have a trauma healing group starting. Um, we, uh, uh, one of our elders, Jenny, has gone to be certified, and as a part of that, they want to bring some, uh, they have to go through a couple of courses of this with some people that are willing to just kind of jump in, even though she hasn't quite been certified with that. And she also has two other people that um, she is bringing along in that journey Floor and Logan Skidmore. And so our hope is that we would have a fully functioning trauma and healing group and uh, the ability that if you have a need in that area, we have people that you can go to and talk to to help you walk through those issues. This first group is going to start on August 31st and it will happen two times a week for three weeks. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, evenings, for the next three, uh, for the three weeks following August 31st, and it'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. If you are interested, I think we'll have a link floating around eventually for this, but if you're interested, just email us at office at CG Northeast, all right? And if you're interested in being a part of that as well, we'd love to hear from you on there. Um, this last thing here, uh, this, is, this is what I want to do. Um, we are in the weekend of, of Juneteenth, all right? June, Juneteenth obviously is not today, but this is the weekend of Juneteenth. And what I want us to do is Common Ground Northeast is commemorate Juneteenth. And this is what I want to do. I'm going to read a little excerpt from a guy by the name of Jamar Tisby, a name that, uh, and, a, and a person I've come to know and trust in this conversation as we have um, gone down the route of, of racial reconciliation and justice initiatives. And what I want us to see is that this day is filled with tension because while it is a celebration for some and maybe a commemoration for others, it is definitely uh, a holiday that should never have been necessary in the first place. All right? And so what I want to do is I want to write this, or I want to read this um, excerpt from a, an article that Jamar Tisby, um, you can see the wholeness, maybe I'll post it later so you can read it on your own. Um, but this is what it says. Juneteenth is a complicated event to remember. It requires white people to face the fact that white supremacy and racism were codified in an economically exploitive system of labor called race-based chattel slavery. Juneteenth is the annual argument against American exceptionalism. This great experiment in democracy and in inequality was flawed from the start. Those noble words of the Declaration of Independence, and listen to this, all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those words were written by a slaveholder, and they excluded far more people than they included. Black people have been fighting racism literally since the moment people of African descent were forcibly brought to North America centuries ago. Even in 2021, fighting racism is a daily battle from the workplace to the so-called routine traffic stops to the wealth gap. Racism is exhausting in its ubiquity. So for black people, Juneteenth is a much needed day of rest. And I want us to hear that. For those who are not, who are, who are in the white community, this is a day of much needed rest. But it's different for us in the white community. But for those who are historically benefited from slavery and the various forms of oppression that evolved after that, Juneteenth should mean something different. For white people, humility, contrition, and anti-racist action should be characterized in the commemoration of Juneteenth. Do you see the difference there? Are we kind of catching like the, the nuance that he's trying to pull out of there? And so I want to honor this request and I want to pray this to be true of us. I, I don't think those words are necessarily super difficult for us to hear. There's not a lot in there that you could say you disagree with. It's just how do we want to deal with that here and now and in today? What do we do on our end in a, a mostly white community to support our brothers and sisters in Christ? But then also to allow rest and celebration for those um, of whom this, this moment in time um, cause the most harm. So I want to pray for that, and then we will, uh, we will move on um, into uh, the rest of our service. So Lord, thank you um, for voices like Jamar Tisby, voices that we know who are committed to the scriptures, but also committed to walking people through these engagements. And so God, I pray that as uh, we uh, engage with this holiday, uh, that we would do so in a way that befits us according to the ways in which we have, uh, our relationship has been um, in regards uh, to racial reconciliation in America. So God, let us be aware, let us be awake, let us be supportive in the white community. And for those um, who, who uh, have been harmed by this and are still under the duress um, of, a, of a racialized country, Father, I pray for relief, I pray for rest, I pray for celebration. 
and I pray for jubilee. Yes, Lord. God, speak to us. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see. We lift this up right now and ask for you to do whatever work is necessary in our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Well, as has been our habit over the last few years before COVID, I'm going to ask you to do a social distanced meet and greet, okay? So in whatever level you are comfortable, you can high five, you can do a fist bump, I guess, if everyone's cool with that. Um, be mindful of those who maybe are being more cautious and don't want you to reach out to them and just kind of do a wave. But I do want us to go ahead and stand up and just say hello to somebody who might be around you. Can you do that right now? There's a well-known saying that perception is reality. The idea that our individual perception of something becomes our truth. But if we are honest, this is self-limiting. There are blind spots, solutions, and aspects of an event, concept, or moment that can only be revealed from the vantage point of a diverse community. If we want to continue to be a learning community, we must make it a habit to invite many voices to speak into our lives and help us to evaluate what we see or what we cannot see on our own, even if we don't always agree. This practice helps us to see new opportunities and allows us to grow in a comprehensive way in our journey towards devotion, community, and mission. As an individual, as a house church, as a faith community, as the body of Christ, this is Perspective Shift. Amen. Well, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce to you our guest speaker today. Um, Miss Hazel Owen is a pastor, uh, the associate pastor at Common Ground Midtown Campus. She is also a marriage inist, and she is ready to give us uh, a word from God here today. And I want to say, too, I feel like this is just the beginning for Hazel. I I've, I've love uh, the stuff that she posts if you follow her. Um, and I just feel like God has such an anointing in her life. So if you don't know her, get to know her maybe sometime afterwards. But would you welcome to the floor... Ms. Hazel Owen. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. It is such a joy and such an honor to be with you in person. And I'm not dressed from the waist up recording a sermon. It feels so good to see you all and to be back at Common Ground Northeast. It's been a few years uh, since I've been here, and so thank you, thank you, thank you for welcoming me. Thank you, Pastor Eric Thien. Uh, Y'all got a pastor who preaches and sings. Man, you guys are blessed, and so thank you so much for your gracious invitation. Thank you to Katie who put up with me and um, not getting my slides to her on time. 
just to tell her I don't have slides. years ago. Where he was physically present but wasn't emotionally present. Um, and so we just had a, a real interesting uh, journey. But that journey led to reconciliation, that journey led to redemption and um, an acceptance of who each other is. And so one of the things, though, although our relationship was a little intense at times, we always bonded over sports. I am not the most athletic person, um, but I come from a family of sports. Both sides of my family is And particularly football. And we love the Chicago Bears. Oh, did somebody say boo? Uh-uh, blasphemy, okay? Um, no. <laughs> but we do, we love the Chicago Bears. It is bear down country in our family, and that is like literally the only games we will watch. Um, it reminds me of this time where my brother, my older brother, I think he was trying to impress some girl he was dating at the time. They ended up going to a Green Bay pack. Thank you. <laughs> and so <laughs> they're at this Green Bay Packers game. He's trying to impress her, and he has on Green Bay gear. As if that wasn't enough, this, I almost called him something, this guy <laughs> ends up taking a picture of himself in the stand, smiling all big as if he was having some fun. I guess he was. And he posted it on social media, on Facebook in particular. And so at that point, I see the picture, and I'm a little upset. Like, how are you at the game that our rival team is playing Green Bay, and you got on Green Bay gear? It's like a Colts fan showing up to a Patriots game in full-blown Patriots gear while the Patriots are playing the Colts. Like, it makes no sense. It's so, it's just blasphemy to me. And so my brother posts this picture, and he has this smile on his face, and he, he puts it out there, and next thing I know, there are comments from family members. They're calling him a traitor. They told him that he can't come to the next family cookout. They said, take that garbage off. I mean, they are going in on him, even the most low-tech individuals in my family, the most seasoned folks in my family, somehow managed to navigate a tricky Facebook login and miraculously make a comment on his post to tell him to take that mess off. It got so, I kid you not, it got so bad, y'all, that I started getting calls from my cousins and other relatives, and they're like, Hazel, you really need to talk some sense into your brother. I'm like, I can't tell him what to do. This is weird. So anyway, we end up on the phone later that night, and I asked him, I said, Mark, why did you have the Green Bay gear on? He said, well, on the outside, it looks like I was repping the Packers, but on the inside, I was really cheering for the Bears. And so as I was preparing this message on devotion, I, that story came to mind. And I, as I got a little bit of a chuckle out and, and remember, remembering that, it reminded me so much of how we as Christians do the same thing. We are so easily swayed at times uh, in giving our devotion to other things and other people when God wants us to be devoted to him inside and out. God doesn't want us to waver in our devotion. And so, remembering this story made me think of just how depending on our circumstances, 
we can forget all the things that God means to us in our lives. We get ourselves sometimes so wrapped up in things and in people who don't have a heaven or a hell to put us in than we are to the one who we say can move mountains. And ask to lead us to where our trust is without borders. The one who we say is a way maker and a miracle worker and a promise keeper, that is who you are. We sing about these things. And we sing these songs and, and in the moment we are feeling it, but can we live out and embody the words that we sing? God wants our lives to be devoted God wants our devotion to be unwavering. And unlike my family who momentarily disowned my brother and put him in a family timeout, God is so devoted to us that even when we turn our back on him, he's still waiting with open arms right where we left. We're going to be in verses uh, 42 through 40, 47, and then I'm going to have another scripture as well that we're going to turn to, um, and this is going to make up the context of today's message. So let's start with Acts 2, verse 42 through 47. It's on our screen as well. And those of you who are streaming online, thank you for not turning me off just yet. You realize that your pastor's not preaching and you're still holding on, and so I appreciate those who are dying. All right, Acts 2, I was just trying to give y'all time to get there. Um, in the New International Version I'm reading, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. All right, if you would. Just flip backwards in your Bible. Just go back a few uh, books. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 38. And again, I'm going to read from the NIV. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. If you are taking notes this morning, and if I just had to put a title on this message, I would call it Stay Devoted. Would you pray with me? Lord, let the words of my mouth, God, let the meditations of our hearts, God, let them be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength. And you are our Redeemer. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so the early church in Acts gives us a model for how we as Christ followers should not only do church, but should be the church. We get a picture of how the body of Christ should look when we are devoted to a life with God. To give a little bit of context here, Most 
folks were waiting, with expl- uh, waiting for an explanation, I should say. And that's when, through the Spirit, Peter began to address the crowd. He preaches a sermon of salvation, and what we see in verse 41, that those who accepted the message were baptized, and 3,000 were added to their number. Essentially, after they accepted the invitation, that's basically they made an internal commitment. (laughs) They were then baptized that was given an outward expression, and the next thing they did was devote themselves. Their devotion began with being devoted to the apostles' teachings, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Let me, let me just read that how I hear it in my head. Their devotion began with being devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Emphasis on the the. Stay with me as um, we're going to have a mini Bible study in this Sunday message, okay? The word the in the Greek denotes a participle that I cannot pronounce because I didn't take Greek in seminary. I'm so sorry. But essentially what this participle in the Greek means is to be constantly diligent to adhere or to give oneself to something. In particular, in, in these verses in, the, in this text, the first thing the Greek participle denotes were the apostles' teachings. There were many false teachers going around at that time, and y'all, there are many false teachers in our current day. Be careful who you watching online. And these new believers, they accepted the apostles' teachings because it was the apostles who were the ones who received Jesus' commandments through the power of the Holy Spirit, and they were eyewitnesses to the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. In their devotion to the apostles' teachings, they were essentially being devoted to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then you have here in the text the fellowship and the breaking of bread. This is not just simply sharing a meal together. You see that later in the verses that they actually do that. But at this point in the text, it denotes their devotion to participating in communion and a commitment to intimacy with one another and brotherly love. They were committed to being in community. Their devotion was not just a simple act, or a single act, I should say. It wasn't something that they just saw as, oh, this is my individual choice with God. It was communal for them as well. It was a both and. Their devotion to a life with God showed up not only in their lifestyle, but how they treated one another. You see, the closer you get to God, it has no choice but to directly impact how you treat other people, especially those who are different from you, who don't align with what you say, who don't agree with everything you do, um, that you see as different, that you see as flawed. Your relationship with God will directly impact how you treat others. So you want to see where you are with God? Check how you're treating other people. We see in the latter verses of uh, Acts 2 that they came together. They had everything in common. They sold their possessions and goods in order to give to anyone who had need. They worshiped together. They fellowshiped together. They praised and reverenced God. And they took joy in the favor for God, a favor of God for all people. So that basically means that they weren't secretly hating on each other. It reminds me that that last part reminds me of the teachings of Paul in Romans 12 when Paul says, uh, rejoice with those who are rejoicing and mourn with those who are mourning and weep with those who are weeping. Y'all, we can't do that apart from a devoted life with God. It is through our devotion to God where we can actually sit and hold space for those who are weeping without centering.
carefully curated photo of our devotional space, our devotional reading, our notebook, and our cute little cup of coffee that says, this girl runs on Jesus. <laughs> and we post that on social media with the hashtag, Jesus and coffee. But then we spend the rest of our day doing the very opposite of what we noted from our Jesus and coffee time. Motion shouldn't be limited to reading a scripture a day to keep the devil away, but rather we are instructed to meditate on the word of God day and night. We are to hide God's word in our hearts. We are to internalize the word of God because what we take in tends to show up in what we put out. It is out of the heart that what? The mouth speaks. What are you internalizing? Staying devoted to God moves beyond a single act of worship, beyond a 15-minute prayer time, studying and adhering to teaching and the breaking of bread. It's all those things, yes. And it's our consistency in doing them, yes. And it's also reflective in the way that we live. Because devotion is a lifestyle. Devotion is a state of mind. It is giving our whole life over to God and joining in God's work here on earth. We love the passage from Paul in Galatians that we are not citizens here um, in heaven. There's no uh, Greek or Jew, no man or woman, no slave, nor what have you. We love that, but there's work as Christians that we need to do here. We can't wait for the by and by. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Devotion is a lifestyle. It is leaning on God through good times and bad. And staying devoted is not easy. Let me just keep it real with y'all. I am not up here because I'm perfect. Lord knows I am his biggest hot mess. Um, <laughs> I don't have this thing down all the time. My devotion can get a little shaky at times, too. I can find myself at times being more devoted to my work, being devoted to other people, or even my own selfish ambitions. Staying devoted means staying dedicated. And sometimes I am more dedicated to things that are outside of God's will than I am to the God who is dedicated and devoted to me and his dedication and his devotion towards me is unwavering. And yet, I leave him hanging sometimes. And y'all could quit looking at me crazy because I know for a fact that I'm not the only one who feels that way. Our devotion and dedication to a life with God should not depend on our circumstances. When your back is up against the wall, when the bottom feels like it's going to fall out, when you can't outthink your way, pay your way, co-opt your way, steal your way, appropriate your way, or use your education or financial status or community status, our devotion to God must be the thing that anchors us in the midst of all trials, all tribulations, and all things that are good coming our way. The early Christians were a great example of this because they were still in great danger. They remained devoted to the liberating God. Staying devoted is not easy, but it's necessary. When my devotion to God gets a little challenging at times, because it does, uh, yes, I'm a therapist, and yes, I'm a pastor, and I'm also human. When it gets a little challenging, I tend to find and draw inspiration from many biblical characters like Daniel and his three homeboys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see, they maintained their devotion to God through Babylonian captivity regardless of the consequences. 
They wouldn't bow down to the king. They didn't give in to anything that was outside of God's will. They remained faithful to God in spite of their condition and in spite of anything that was thrown their way. I'm inspired by Queen Esther and her devotion that put her at risk of death but resulted in saving an entire nation of people. I'm inspired by Job, who was an upright man in the sight of God and others uh, when he was struck with illnesses and having everything down to his own children taken from him. Having his wife and his day ones, his friends, start talking all kinds of crazy to him. He was so devoted to God to the point that in his crying out and in his worship to God, he says, though he slay me, yet will I hope in him, yet will I trust him. He did not say, Lord, if you get me out of this, then I'm going to trust you. He said, Lord, you get me in this mess, and yet I'm going to trust you. Staying devoted may not be easy, but it's necessary. I'm inspired by the resiliency of my ancestors who remained devoted to God through their enslavement in this country. I'm inspired by the black church. Though not perfect, because no church is perfect, the church stops being perfect the day you and I walked in it. But I'm inspired by the black church and how she continues to maintain her devotion to Christ and to God's people since the late 1700s, holding secret meetings in the woods, being a target for domestic terrorist acts and white supremacy, and continues to be a target with her building and the bodies who fill it being defaced, bombed, set on fire, and even shot up even during sacred times of worship. Yet, the black church she remains devoted to a life with God. So, yeah, y'all, devotion is not easy. We even see that through the life of Jesus Christ, a man who knew no sin, yet he was tempted. He was betrayed. Jesus was First and new commandment that we read in Matthew 22, and I'm going to read it again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Y'all, if this was something that we could do easily, it would not be a commandment. It just wouldn't. is the power of the Holy Spirit to help us in our devotion. In order to stay devoted, we need the Spirit of God to permeate our hearts, to permeate our soul and our mind, and we have to welcome it. Staying devoted becomes difficult because oftentimes we try to take things in our own Jesus, Jesus teaches that we can't serve two masters. We'll either hate one and love the other, we'll be devoted to one, or we'll despise the other. We can't be devoted to God and the thoughts and opinions of people who don't have a heaven or hell to put us in. We can't be devoted to God and to the love of money, of power, of status, can't be devoted to God and to our own selfish ambitions. So we are commanded to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Emphasis on the all. We can't be divided in that way. So as I close, so I can get y'all off to brunch and... Um, 
get you back to your regularly scheduled Sunday plans. <laughs> I want to remind us that the power of the Spirit that raised the dead Jesus is in the heart of each of us who have accepted the invitation to a life with God. That spirit will anchor us in our devotion to live our lives in the way of Jesus. The invitation, if you have not accepted, is here. The question is, will you accept it and will you stay devoted to it? Can I pray for y'all? God, we just thank you for the truth of your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. That your word can reach the hearts of each and every person here and those who are streaming live. live. And God, we just thank you for the reminder of what it means to be devoted to you. Thank you for the example of the early Christians who through fear and trials and tribulations set a model for us on a life devoted to you and for Jesus, who is, a, who is an example of how we should live our lives. And thank you for your son. God, when we find ourselves wandering around and we move away towards the things that are not pleasing to you, Lord, we just, I just ask that you just help guide us back. When our eyes and our hearts and our minds is off of you, Lord, I just pray that your spirit would just guide us back to where you are, to where we left you. And God, I just praise you for what you will do through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you so much, Hazel. It's powerful. Um, I want to encourage us as we move into our response time just to consider the words that Hazel said and um, becoming students at times of communities that have remained faithful even under um, dark circumstances to see how Jesus became a, uh, a model for us that he stayed devoted through all of the things that he walked through. And just say thank you so much to Hazel for bringing that word. We appreciate it so much. As we respond, we always do so by asking us and suggesting that we do so through singing, that we praise and give thanks to God through our prayers, and we're going to sing in just a few minutes. We also give, and we want to invite you, if you feel compelled, uh, uh, according to your means, to be a joyful giver in whatever way God has convicted you to do so. If you are um, behind the things that we're doing here at Common Ground Northeast, you can give either physically right now, there's a tithes and offerings box here in the back, and then also um, online, you can go to cgnortheast.com, and there are two ways to give there uh, through the online means and also a text to give option there. So we just want to ask you to consider that in response to the hearing of the word of God and, and what God is doing through our community. And then we ask that we would pray, that we would respond now through prayer, that we would respond by asking God to continue to move through us in our community and applying the words that Hazel just challenged us to apply in our lives towards devotion. If you have any prayer requests, I'd love to pray with you today. You can catch me and I'll pray with you today. Um, or if you have anything down the line or throughout the week, you can always email us at office at CG Northeast. And then finally, we remember, um, we come to the table as we do every Sunday to take communion. And we do so by hinging ourselves between two things. We anchor ourselves between the past and the future. The past being that we know that Jesus, he stood uh, before his disciples and he started, he inaugurated this idea of the Lord's table and, and the partaking of communion as he said that the, the bread was his body broken for us and the blood was, or sorry, the wine was, the, was his blood poured out for us. And we also look towards the future that one day, once again, we will stand or sit at the banquet table in heaven with every tribe, tongue, and nation as we feast together at the table with Jesus. Let me read to you from Matthew 26, 26 through 30. And if you were not able to grab the little um, container with the cracker and the juice, you can feel free to go grab that in the lobby right now. Matthew 26, 26 through 30, it says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, and get, uh, blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples. He said, take, eat, this is my body. 
And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. We believe in an open table here, meaning that everyone who calls himself a follower of Jesus can partake in communion. So after a moment of reflection, feel free, whenever you're ready, to take of the bread and of the juice. The table is open. All right, if you'll all stand with us again. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah, I will watch the darkness flee, I raise a hallelujah, 
in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive i'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. Amen. You guys have a great day today. As you go, know that Christ walks with you, and everywhere you step, the kingdom of heaven goes. And so, would you go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.